Welcome along to a special GTN show. We are in Hawaii. Now I have an apology to make. You might be able to hear the ocean. I'm afraid we get the view and you guys are just gonna have to listen to it. But it isn't special just because of the location. It's special because I have a special guest, Laura Siddle. Welcome along. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm not I'm not complaining about the view. I'm sure the viewers yeah. are complaining about spin, their view. We might have to spin the camera um, around. But yeah, it's not a bad uh, not a bad location yeah. to be here. Well, you can guess probably what we're gonna be talking about today. Yep, all things the Ironman World Championships, the first time it's been a female only race here in Kona. Yeah, well, we need to crack on with the show because Laura is actually racing and I don't want to take up too much of her time. Well, first up, Laura, I want to know how you are. You've had quite a sort of tumultuous year starting um, <laughs> yeah. with that accident in Brazil, but great to see you here racing. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, no, I'm good. I mean, we can't not be good. I'm in Hawaii and um, I was given a wild card to race as a result of the... I didn't realise that. Okay. Yeah, as a result of the, the accident in Brazil, um, which I'm incredibly grateful for. So yeah. kind of coming into this with sort of, well, we always put pressure on ourselves we're athletes that's what we do but kind of no expectations no pressure it's I uh, was speaking to training partner Tim O'Donnell and similar when he came in after breaking his foot sort of mm. wasn't expecting to be here kind of almost shouldn't be here and so we just got like a free a free opportunity to make the most of it so yeah it's uh yeah I'm, I'm doing I'm doing a lot better I'm still not out the woods like still managing a lot of um symptoms so I had a brain bleed as a result of the crash yeah. um which then is a funny thing that just, yeah, side effects linger and things like that. But you manage it and it's, yeah, yeah, doing all right, Touchwood. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's great to see you here with, with a smile on your face and, and racing. And I'm, I know you've been here a few more days than us. I'd love to know your thoughts on like the vibe so far. I've seen that there's over 2,000 women that are registered. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, what's it feeling like out there being out there training and just uh, this, this first I mean, women's that only coda? First, I think that is amazing. The fact that there's 2, 000, over 2,000 women here yeah. is just fantastic. I mean, we had, you know, last year we saw um, the two separate days of racing. There were some male age groupers on the Thursday with the women, but, and it was such an, a, an amazing feeling that, but here just being women only, um, I think is really special. Um, I got here Monday, so first few days, I actually thought we were pretty quiet, but I do avoid town. I kind of yeah. take the, take the back roads out onto the Queen, the Queen K and everything. So didn't, head down into town too much. But it felt pretty quiet onto the, on, out on the roads riding and didn't see that many people. Okay. Um, but that was quite nice. Um, but there's been a notable change this, over this weekend. So I think I, went, I was down at the pier doing some filming on Thursday morning and there was sort of no one there and then went down on Friday morning and the tents were up and it was packed and yeah. then um, rode today. Uh, I actually did a loop, a great loop up to Harvey and then the top over the oh, over the lovely. hill which is just there's no one there so yeah. it's just beautiful um, but coming when we were coming back in the car there was definitely a lot more people out and about riding so mm. the it's building the buzz yeah. is building and I just I think there's gonna be a really nice vibe with yeah. you know the women racing but obviously there's still a lot of the locals are out riding still. A lot of support supporters are here. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited. I mean, I've for this seen week. a lot of men on TT bikes. Yeah, I have. I do wonder <laughs> if they like. I do wonder if they like booked and booked their flights and accommodation anyway and just carried on. <laughs> and, bring the bike, why not? Or they're just being incredibly supportive. Yeah. Training partners, well, it's coaches. It's the only way they can keep up with their. Athletes. Or it's the only way they can keep up with their athlete or their wife, their partner, yeah. whatever it is. So yeah, I think they'll still be a great mix. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. And I mean, on this note, what what are your thoughts? I mean, we've obviously seen the men's race go uh, happen in Nice and. And, you know, from the outside look like a success, but the the fact that women get their own race, their own day, and their own location, but at kind of a forfeit of not having yeah. the whole sport here. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I have some thought. I'm going to wait to see what this next weekend yeah. race day is like. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited that the women get their own day. I think that is re for me that is really important for our sport. Um, I do like the fact when the men and women are in the same play, same location and you yeah. get to support each other. But, um, you know, Nice looks like a fantastic rent, a fantastic venue. And I think it'd be nice to rotate the world, mm. championships, world championships anyway. I think we saw that in St. George last year. Yeah. It's just a different course. It just brings out different, different strengths of different athletes, mm. um, which I think is really exciting. But I, I mean, I think this year, like just, not only is it 
women only, but everybody is here. Like from a professional yeah. professional point we'll of view, let's to, say that. Yeah, we'll come on to Everybody the, the is here and that it. is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. And let's hope that does the talking. T- yeah, yes. Yeah. And touch wood, we've still got a week to go. And yeah. so stay fit, healthy, safe, everybody, please. Yeah. <laughs> so that brings me on to the race. And obviously you are in it, but you know a lot of the pros. You followed the, the racing because you race. Yep. Who, oh. like, who do you think is in form? <laughs> I, I think everybody is in form. I mean, no one says when they aren't, yeah, especially course, leading course. into this race because they don't want to sort of yeah. open any doors. But, you know, I think you're never going to write off Daniela Reef, And if she's on a day like she was in Challenge Roth, oh, yeah. see you later. She's in a different postcode. You know, and Annie Haug, she's won here before. I think she's, I, I, I say dark horse. Obviously, she's a world champion. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think she's getting maybe as much attention. yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I think a Cat Matthews is in form. Mm-hmm. Um, Taylor Nib. Yeah, can't. Can't. What, what are your thoughts on Taylor? Because it's also unknown, and I think it's so exciting that we're like, oh my gosh, we don't know what's going to happen. Now. I mean, I think it's exciting. She could win debut Ironman, yeah. debut Kona, youngest ever female athlete. She could be a Daniela and ride herself into a different postcode, mm. and then she doesn't need to run amazingly. Yeah. Do we know what she's like in the heat? No, but then the best people in the heat crumble in Kona. Kona does funny things mm-hmm. to everybody. Mm-hmm. So I think she's an exciting addition yeah. into it. Yeah. Um, and then not many people have been mentioning Chelsea, our current I know, reigning funny, world champion. Yeah. And, and she's been she's, keeping herself quite quiet. She's been keeping herself quite quiet. And it's kind of like, well, you know, yeah, there's just, and then if you, if you go further afield, there's such a deck this year of women's racing like so many people could be top 10 yeah so many people could be for top five um you know like elisa norden mm-hmm. uh sarah crowley's always raced well in, yeah. in kona always sarah, podium sarah true. sarah true is another one um gosh oh, i, yeah, could I, like like I, I start literally list, start yeah. listing when people have asked me this question this week i end up and they say so you've just said the whole start list i'm like <laughs> yeah and i think that's that's a testament to the women this year that mm take away the 70.3 specialists so you know like an Ashley Gentle mm-hmm. Emma Pallant Brown um, Holly Lawrence maybe. Holly Lawrence yeah. and Paula Findlay who haven't yet done a yeah. full distance there is nobody that isn't here yeah that's so, it's so cool isn't nobody that isn't here case and that's why I'm like it. touch wood stay yeah. safe everybody yeah. like yeah, yeah. It's um, super exciting. Now, there's another post that I just want to chat, chat to you about <laughs> that I noticed from, from Tristan at Tri Rating, who loves his yeah. stats. And I just thought this was actually quite interesting. He's put it into a layman's terms and he's looking at <laughs> the ages yeah. of the athletes. And, and sorry, Laura, you, you are <laughs> at, the, at the upper end. But he's got I some am. interesting points here. So he's got Taylor Nib as the, the youngest pro racing at 25, who, interestingly, even if she wins, She's going to be older than the winner of the men's race, and and he's got the average here of the of them the women at thirty five point two years compared to the men at thirty one point nine, and I was pretty surprised at that. Um, I am, and I'm not. I think you know this the the data shows that women get better with age yeah. over the endurance distance. Yeah. So I think that might be a reflection in that. Um, I think also maybe women. Uh, it, another interesting stat would be to see how many of those women were corporate or had other jobs first and then yeah. turned pro because I think again I'm sweeping a statement I think <laughs> a me, the, the men tend to just potentially just go straight yeah. in women with various other commitments in their life stereotypically maybe mm-hmm. it takes a bit longer yeah. um, or just build up I mean that's crazy though like just think potentially we could have the two youngest ever winners yeah of the world championships this year mm-hmm. a 24 year old a 25 year old and then we could have the oldest ever if annie Hag wins it, exactly that's right or if you win if i win or mel mcquade <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i know it's crazy uh, yeah. i think it's really inspiring as well just people watching that that you know it used to be thought in sport as like mid 30s was like oh you know, I, know. I retired at 30 because i was told i was too old this you know? is I, so... I mean i didn't start triathlon until i was 29 wow and then i turned pro professional at 34 and again that's when everyone most yeah. of the sports are saying well you're way yeah. way past professional kind of yeah, yeah and i think that and i think more and more of us are showing what can be done like jan fredino mm-hmm. i know he's retired now but still oh, at the top of the game yeah. i always i it always 
pleasantly surprises me that Annie Haug's 40. I know, I and literally just is... said as I was researching this and I was reading it, I was like, oh my God, I really forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and Daniela Reef, I think, is late 30s and a lot of the other women we can look on there. Yeah, uh, yeah and that average age of, I mean, 35. Yeah. What is also interesting this year, though, it's funny, because I started the sport late, then this is also my sixth year racing here, which I kind of, I think the pandemic skewed everything. Yeah. But I forget I've done so many races here. Mm. But if you look at the women's start list, there's so many people who are either here for the first time, yeah, they've crazy. raced just once or twice here. Mm -hmm. And then there's sort of maybe half a dozen of us who have that, I think Daniela's got the most with eight. Okay. But then there's sort of, an, and then five, and yeah. a few of us with five and six. But then there's this huge wave. Of one or two or none. That yeah. are just coming through. Yeah. And so you've got the, the older end of the, the sport for the women and that average age of 35, mm. but so many of them are sort of new into the sport and just bringing it yeah. to this next level. I think that's, yeah, it's super exciting for women's well, racing. But I'm, I'm excited to see what Tristan comes out with stats after the after this race, because I'm sure he'll have a yeah. whole, whole load more. If you guys like stats, I would suggest going and, and checking out the tri waiting website. It's very interesting. Yeah. But also, Laura, you know, we've got Mal McQuaid racing, so hopefully we'll see you here for another seven years. Well, that's it. And I, you know, I train in, in Boulder with uh, Julie Dibbins, is my coach in the JD mm -hmm. crew. We have Dee Dee Griesbauer oh, yeah. in, our, in our squad. She's 53 and still... That's incredible. Kicking ass. She's still racing. She won Ultraman last year, oh, just yeah, smashing every... We were riding today and just reminiscing about the amazing uh, performance she put in. You supported her? I did support her mm. and just... I, I don't think I'm going to be racing professionally for that long, I'll have to say. <laughs> um, Another 10 years, there you go. But it's certainly inspiring for yeah. the women's side of the sport. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's inspiring to see you racing as well and, and great that you're back here. I'm not going to take any more of your time because I know it's an important week and you're probably dragged in all directions. So That's good luck. It. Thank you, you for having seeing me. Your race. No, thanks for the chat. Thanks, Laura. Well, big thanks to Laura, and it's now time to crack on with the rest of the show. And we have got plenty of reacts. And the first one, the big one that I think most people who have any interest in running will have spotted, the men's marathon world record has just been broken. Yes, we've only just had the women's record. It's now the men's turn by over 30 seconds. So Kenyan Kelvin Kiptum took off more than 30 seconds from Elliot Kipchoge's record to go under two hours, one minute for the first time, clocking a time of two hours and 35 seconds. And I think it isn't actually gonna be that long until we see the two hour marker broken. I mean, with the shoe technology and obviously all of the technology and science for um, athletes training, it is super exciting. That was in the Chicago Marathon. And yeah, just, I mean, to see the record broken by that, we very rarely see that. Obviously we did in the women's as well, but mind blowing stuff. Um, a little bit back down to earth with this next post from Vicky Holland. So last week we talked about how she'd had a great race, a great comeback to finish in the top 10 at the World Cup in Tangier, Morocco. Well, she's just put a very transparent post here after her race in Rome where things didn't go quite to plan. And um, yeah, she's just been really open and said the race felt completely different. And I think she had a little bit of an experiment of traveling with her baby this time instead of leaving it at home. And maybe she's learned a few things from that but um, I always appreciate it when athletes just open when things don't always go perfectly because that's just life isn't it next uh, we have this post from Josh Amberger and um, with Ironman actually and it's from the 70.3 Langkawi race couples goals him and his partner Ashley Gentle both won their races the men's and the women's respectively so pretty good day and not a bad paycheck day I'd imagine for, the, for them going home but we'll come on to the race news later on although still we've got another post about a race here Challenge Barcelona Alistair Brownlee was back racing which we're all very excited to see and he's again put quite a frank post silver today happy to be able to race hard all the way to the finish line at Barcelona Triathlon I knew the run would be tough off limited training and he says congrats to Yuri Kulin after a great battle felt so good to be back just love racing I wanted to see what I had in the tank um, yeah he seems to be really um, thrilled with that so it's really cool to see we all love to see Alistair back racing as well and now we're moving well almost on to Kona Post this one is actually a Kona Post from Daniela but a bit light-hearted and she's got a bit of a funky swimsuit on and she says some pool quiche will this bring Sebastian Keenley back to the pool I asked AI and this is the answer so it says, Sebastian Keeney, known for his exceptional performance in triathlons, is no stranger to the pool. With his determination and dedication, he has conquered many swimming challenges in his career. The pool kitsch, with its vibrant colors and playful design, adds a touch of fun to the serious training atmosphere. 
maybe this Paul Kitch could bring a smile to Sebastian Keeney's face and remind him of the joy of swimming. Who knows, it might just be the motivation he needs to jump back into the pool. I like to see a little bit of lightheartedness. We don't see that much of Daniela's personality from her Instagram. Um, Sebastian replied with a nice paddle and pool set with you, champ, together with the vibrant colors will definitely get me into the pool. So yeah, I don't think um, Sebastian's in Kona, but otherwise we might spot him training. Which leads me on to this next post from him. And he says, welcome to the story of the preparation for my last long course race. I definitely start from the bottom. After Norseman, I did everything to get as unfit as possible within 14 days. And yeah, he goes on to basically say he succeeded. Um, he did go out to Cal uh, challenge Samarkand where James was racing, but sadly was ill, didn't able to race there. But um, we had still have a great interview from Sebastian. So you can go and check that one out if you want to hear a little bit of insight from someone who's certainly been in the sport for a very long time and has some wise words. And now it is time to move on to the Kona Spam. This is going to be, well, maybe the last week, depends what we have after the race. Uh, all of the athletes who, quite a lot of them now, have professional photographers out here. And it's kind of this, like, look at me, I'm feeling great and I'm really fit. And we won't really know who is fit or not until after the race, but some cool picks anyway. Sarah Crowley has this one back on the big island. Feels so comfortable here with many amazing memories and excitement. Um, and she actually did her prep camp in Mexico, so it's something a bit different coming from her. Daniela, this is the sort of post we're more used to seeing from Daniela. Daniela, very professional, more serious looking. Um, the last long run in the books, race week for the women Ironman world champs, and she's looking very focused there. Laura Phillip, who actually we've got to do a bit of filming with. So we've got a video coming out with Laura soon as well. Um, but yeah, some lovely photos on her Instagram. Lucy Charles, another week down in Kona and finally race week. And all of the athletes ticking off. Last long run done, last long ride done. And, and she did. She won the, the training swim as well out here a couple of days ago. So things are looking good for Lucy. And here's a picture. We see very little, don't we, from Anna Howe. Um, but it's actually been posted by Corrupt Vision, the photographer, and he's put some rather moody pictures of Anna looking incredibly lean and fast. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if she posts anything before the race. So I'll keep an eye. And then finally, a nice sort of feel-good post from Kat Matthews. And she's got a great training group with her, and you might even spot in these photos, if you have a scroll through, that um, there's a certain Zwift Academy athlete as well, who we're also hearing lots from. So Kat just says, simply as good as it looks, heart and mind filled up on yesterday's ride. And yeah, riding out here can certainly do that. On to tech news, and we have a new release or a new bike from BMC. And this is following on from their partnership with Red Bull Advanced Technologies, which produced the Speed Machine, which we featured on the channel. Well, they now have basically done the same and revisited their road bike, and they have come up with a brand new Team Machine R. But well, they're calling it the ultimate race bike. It's super lightweight, coming in at seven kilos if you're riding a 54 frame. And then they have basically stripped it back and worked on all aerodynamics and stiffness, working alongside the Red Bull Advanced Technologies. And they've got these halo forks, which are apparently ultra wide fork legs. It's unlike anything that's out there in the peloton at the moment, apparently. They've also redesigned the bottom bracket to work with aerodynamics, but also making it stiffer. They've got integrated bottle cages, which apparently when testing in the wind tunnel, actually when the bike has got the hydration in or the bottles in, then it is testing faster, which is something quite interesting that we see all the time in triathlon, but maybe it's less common when it comes to road cycling. Um, and yeah, there's lots of other features. So a lot of hype around that bike. It's quite exciting. Right, we've also got another piece of tech news. And we just happened to be filming this show at the Zwift Triathlon Academy house. And this next piece of tech is from Zwift. So I'm gonna head in and show you. This is a very exciting brand new release from Zwift. It's an update on the Zwift Turbo Trainer. It is the new Zwift Hub One. In short, it takes away the cassette from the trainer and the chain slots straight into this new hub, which means you can put any bike straight on your trainer. And it then auto calibrates it for you, so you can simply swap bikes in and out and just gives it a second or two to work out where it needs to be and off you go. So say you have an 11 speed 
cassette and your partner has a 12 speed, you don't need to be changing cassettes over on your trainer. You can just put your bike straight on. And it comes with the Zwift Click, this little device which you can put anywhere on your handlebars. And this controls that virtual shifting for a very smooth ride. But anyway, we're going to be talking more about this on the tech tour, so keep an eye out. But this has just been released today. Back out to the sunshine for a little bit of race news. Yes, there is still racing going on, even though all eyes are going to be on Kona this weekend. So we had the Rome World Cup, which I mentioned, where Vicky Holland was racing. The men's race was won by Vasco Velarca, Arnaud Mengel was second, and Simon Henselight was third. Uh, Nina Elm won the women's race ahead of Marlene Gomez-Gogel and Katia Shah was third. And remember, there's still lots of important Olympic points up for grabs. So it's exciting racing at the World Cup level at the moment. Then we move on to Challenge Barcelona, where there was a lot of focus on that because Alistair Brownlee was back. Now, we know the results. Um, he was beaten by Yuri Kulin. Um, and then it was obviously Alistair Brownlee in second ahead of Wilhelm Hirsch in third and the women's race was won by Imogen Simmons ahead of Lucy Buckingham and Caroline Pohl third and we also had Ironman 70.3 Lang Cowie where we know the winners it was Ashley Gentle on the women's side ahead of Amelia Watkinson and Lottie Lucas and the men's race was won by Josh, Josh Ann Berger, Mike Phillips was second and Kurt McDonald was third. Say what? I tried, it doesn't work quite so well on your own, but got to give it a go. Um, I've chosen three comments actually this week from three separate videos. And this first one was from the interview with Sebastian Keenly. And the comment is from The Trouble with Triathlon. It says, I just can't see past Sebi and Jan not ending their careers in Kona. It's the only fitting end for both of them, regardless of performance. I reckon Nice ruined that story, but these guys need to dust off their kit for one last race. I mean, how cool would that be if suddenly they announce beginning of next year that, yep, they're coming back out here for next year. Um, I think we're probably dreaming, but you never know. This next comment is from the Cat Matthews video, which is a bit of insight onto her Kona prep. And I just love this comment because it is full of enthusiasm. It comes from Kaylee F and she says, ah, never have I clicked so hard and fast on a YouTube video. Total fangirl of Cat. She's my all time favorite athlete. Thank you GTN for this superb interview with this lovely lady. Thank you Cat for letting GTN tag along for the day. You inspire me so much. And she just goes on to say that um, she was a fan before the crash, but sadly has actually also been hit by a car so it can relate to the recovery. Well, Kaylee, I hope you're recovering fast. I'm sorry to hear about that, but thank you for your comment. And then this final one was a comment on our race predictions. and. There were a lot. Um, you guys have all got different opinions and I would just love it if we're all wrong and there's someone completely left field that gets on the podium, but it's such a strong women's field, isn't it? So this one comes from Zander0901. Last year's race was won by someone who had only completed one iron distance race to that point, and it was her Kona debut. I wouldn't write off Taylor Nibb since she's literally racing with no pressure. She would go down as a legend if she takes both the 70.3 Worlds and the full distance Worlds in the same year. And that was just one comment. I just thought, yeah, I mean, I could have chosen any of them, but I just love the hype that everyone's got their thoughts and opinions on. And none of us know, basically. But um, yeah, there is basically going to be a lot more Kona content coming out in the next few days. I'm going to be getting sweaty with precision fuel and hydration, things I'll do for a video. We've also got a great behind the scenes training day with Laura Phillip and plenty more. So keep your eyes peeled. And if you want to get into the Kona spirit from wherever you're watching, we have got the Kona t-shirts on the GTN shop right now. So go and check those out. But if you've enjoyed this, we'd love your support. If you gave us a like, and if you're not yet subscribed, click on the globe. And if you haven't yet seen that video that we talked about from Cat Matthews, well, it's on screen now. <laughs>